Hello and uh, welcome. So I came across this website, Fusor.net, uh, way back in 2007, and I've always wanted to replicate the uh, Farnsworth Fusor ever since. Nuclear fusion through electrostatic confinement has been done at home several times in the past, and in fact, Richard Hall, who started this webpage, is the first amateur fusioner. The process seems simple enough, a vacuum chamber, some high voltage, and deuterium, and voila, nuclear fusion in a bottle. This turned out to be, for me, more than a decade long to acquire all the elements necessary for this project. It was nowhere near as simple as others uh, make it look like. So anyway, I found a bunch of uh, cheap stainless steel parts and I had them welded together to make a uh, fusor. And basically these are two uh, stainless steel hemisphere bolted together with a rubber gasket in the middle. And this all come together to create this uh, vacuum chamber you see here. So basically a hollow cathode attracts the positive ions, aka the uh, deuterium nuclide, uh, towards the center. And since the uh, cathode is uh, mostly empty space, the ions sometimes completely miss it and hit each other in the center. And sometimes they fuse into helium-3, releasing neutrons according to this equation. Now I've worked with uh, vacuum and uh, high voltage before. Acquiring uh, deuterium is very difficult and leads to quite a few awkward phone calls and dead-end conversations. In the end, the termination paid off and uh, I've got what I wanted. Although working at the lab probably helped a lot. Now, if you don't have easy access to deuterium, here's something else you could do. Lithium and heavy water are easy enough to acquire and a small chunk of lithium will react to produce lithium deutoxide and deuterium gas. Lithium is preferable because its reaction with water is much more manageable than any other alkaline metals. The reaction will free up some deuterium and lithium deutoxide, as shown here. The deuterium can then be dried and cleaned in either store or used directly. It is, in my humble opinion, much easier than electrolysis, which is a real pain in the And here's the first uh, plasma I managed to obtain. So the pressure is hovering around three to maybe four times 10 to the minus three. And the uh, voltage is uh, 40,000 volts at seven and a half milliamps. But I detected a small vacuum leak in the chamber and the vacuum is absolutely critical. The mean free path of ion depend on the pressure. And if the vacuum isn't deep enough, Fusion won't happen and the deuterium will get flushed away. Any reaction that will release a neutron from inside the nucleus of an atom need to have enough power to make it happen. And the power supply is critical to this whole process. This one has suffered a bit during transport, but it can generate 60,000 volts at 50 milliamps. 3,000 watt seems like a lot of electrical power, but that's what it takes to get fusion going. This unit has given me quite a lot of trouble and still does not operate properly. Now, I'd like to bring your attention to the inner grid. You may recognize this one from those protein shakers from the store, made of uh, stainless steel and available in mass. They seem like a great idea, but uh, I'm not the first to come up with this uh, alternative. Harado Melo had the first documented fusor using this design in the early 2000s. I found that uh, the traditional design worked great and is not as greedy in uh, electrical power. Here it is in operation at about uh, 3 times 10 to the minus 4 tor. Uh, notice the ionized jet of particle uh, from the central plasma bubble. This is just air at about 10,000 volt. There is a two way I plan to detect uh, actual fusion. Detecting neutron with this uh, helium-3 proportional counter, this needs a moderator. So I've built one out of uh, PVC pipes and I filled with wax. It's a simple and cheap way to slow down fast neutron from uh, fusion. Also the deuterium fusion can on very rare occasion fuse directly into helium-4 and release a powerful gamma at about 20 MeV. So I may be able to pick it up with my gamma spectroscopy system, but that remains to be tested. Oh, and I also have this needle valve to introduce deuterium in my chamber at a control rate, which is important to uh, not waste the precious deuterium. So as you can see, this is a work in progress. I am very close to make it happen if it wasn't for this uh, power supply. Glassman, which is now XP power, is of no help whatsoever and is uh, ignoring my email. On the other hand, Fusor.net is a very valuable source of information full of helpful people, advices, and experiment. 
I strongly recommend taking the time to read the vast body of knowledge and details that Mr. Hall has set up over the years. Anyways, I will post my results when I finish this project so we can celebrate. In the meantime, I'm working on another cool one I hope to finalize by next month. So stay tuned. Constructive criticism is always welcome. Thumbs up, subscribe, check out my Patreon page, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Damn it!